Greetings and welcome to the Old Ways Rising Farm woodlot this time. We're going to talk about identifying some trees in winter. This is important if you want to do any kind of tapping. You've got to be able to recognize these trees when there's no leaves on them. So the first one I'm going to look at is not a maple. This is a shrub, but we're going to look at one very important characteristic of it. This is called in the nursery trade red osier or red twig dogwood. It also has the common name red willow, even though it's not a willow or a chinchasha. Um, what we want to look at here is branching structure. There are two branching structures, opposite and alternate. This is an opposite branched species. You can see here these two twigs come off at the same place from the central parent twig and they're directly opposite each other. So this is opposite branching. Opposite branching is relatively uncommon in Eastern North America. There are four groups of plants that have it. Maple, ash, dogwood, this being a dogwood, and Capifoliaceae. Um, Capifoliaceae is a shrub species you're not gonna have to worry about, uh, but you will see maple, ash, and dogwood. So that was a, that was a dogwood we were just looking at. This is an example on an ash. You can see it, this little ash seedling, opposite branched. Okay. And we will spend quite a bit of time looking at maples. But right here, this is a little piece of rubus. This is um, just some wild raspberry. And you can see this is alternate branched. See, we have a twig there, then we come down and we have a bud, then we come down and we have a bud, then we come down and we have a bud, but they're alternating up the side of the twig. So that's the opposite branching pattern and the most common. This is the first thing you want to look at to see if you have something that could potentially be a sugar maple is this branching pattern. And then from there, you want to determine the difference between the sugar maples and the red maples and the other related species that really you don't want to put taps in. So let's keep that knowledge in our mind and let's go look for some sugar maples. Okay, here we have a nice big sugar maple. Um, when we're looking at these, we want to look up, we want to find some twigs. This is not going to show up too well on this little hand camera. But when you're out here standing underneath them, you can look up and you can see do I see evidence of opposite branching? And the answer is yes, I do in many cases. Now, we also have quite a few ash right there. That crooked one is an ash. We'll walk over to him in a minute. We have multiple cases of opposite branching that are not a sugar maple. So the next thing we want to look at here is the bark. And these sugar maples, this is a climax tree. This is a late succession, large tree. Um, these are not short-lived little guys, but <clears throat> it's, it's only the big ones that we want to tap. And if you look at it, if you look at the bark going up here, it has this beautiful kind of platy, but very jagged bark. Okay, And that goes a large way up. When it stops being platy and jagged, it gets very smooth in the upper branches. So that's the bark characteristic of our sugar maple. If we can compare that to some others, if you look at this next one right beside me, this is a little red oak. You look up at the branches, you have no evidence of opposite branching. They're all alternate. And then if we look at the bark, you could see it has these wide plates that cling tightly to the tree and kind of have a little bit of a shiny surface here. That's characteristic of the red oak bark. If we walk a little bit further up this line, these had been tapped before by our neighbor. So there are some tubes hanging off of them there. We have a couple others here that, that occur in these same, sta same stands. This is a little ash. This one is dead thanks to the emerald ash borer. I, I should say no thanks to the emerald ash borer. Um, again, if you look out at the tips way up there, you can see 
In this one you can see it pretty well. I'm zooming in on one of those twigs. You can see that opposite branching. But we have a very different bark structure. Okay, The bark on the ash are these long narrow furrows like this. And that goes again all the way up the tree. Those long narrow furrows. It's relatively soft. You can pick at it with your finger pretty easily. Okay. Another one right beside it. This is fun. This is a fun one. This is a hop horn beam. You can see it is alternately branched, not opposite. And its bark really flaky. You can just rub bits of it off just with the flat of your hand. Now, again, not a tree we want to tap, but it's a very interesting tree. It's one of the hardest and most elastic woods in our forest here, and probably the best bow wood that's growing right here if you're interested in archery-related topics. So that's um, a stand of some mature trees. The one that's going to fool you is the red maple. So I'm going to go continue our little walk and we'll find a place where we have some sugars and some reds growing side by side so we can do a comparison. Okay, there isn't a sugar maple right next to it, but here we have a couple of red maples that are going to give us a really good view of red maple bark. So if you look at the bottom, you can see it's a little rough, but it's kind of rough in, in short plates, not long strips. And then as I go up the trunk, See, it's very, very smooth all the way up. It's a much smoother tree. There's something here that's really characteristic, and that is these marks right there where I'm pointing. You can see those little horizontal lines, somewhat curved. And sometimes on a larger tree, if you look halfway up, you'll see some of these where those curved lines almost make a bullseye pattern. That is very distinctive of a red maple. Okay, there's a patch of it, but very smooth all the way up. The red maple is much faster growing and it is not a late climax species. It's an early succession species. So um, I had to move into some younger, younger forest here in order to find you one. We'll go keep looking for some more examples. Another quick stop along the trail. This is some invasive honeysuckle. This is in the Caprifoliaceae, that um, fifth group that is all shrubby. Just a note, so that's your maple, ash, dogwood, Caprifoliaceae, and then the last one is horse chestnut and buckeyes, but we don't have any of those in our woods, so we're really not going to talk about them more. But if you live over in the Ohio River drainage, you'll start to pick those up in number. Okay, continuing on. Okay, I think this will be our last stop for this video. We're going to look at two more here. This one right in the middle of the frame. This is a nice, larger, more mature red maple. You can see you've got that opposite branch structure obvious on the twigs. And even though it's older and the bark is rougher, it's not nearly as rough and shaggy as those sugar maples get. I'm going to take a little walk over here a bit, and while we do, I'll mention that if you do mix up a red and a sugar, it's really not that big of a deal. The reason we like the sugar maples is because they have the highest production of the highest sugar content. Not because anything bad is going to happen if you happen to tap a red maple. It's not toxic, it's just not very productive. Now this I wanted to show you because this is for succession in progress. That dead tree is an old aspen, I think. We'll see how good my necrodendrology is here. Um, probably an old aspen and it fall, fell over and partially smashed down this younger red maple that's curving and trying to refine the light. All of these are early succession species. The sugar maples are your late succession. So this is the first growing trees being replaced by the later growing trees. If you look at those larger ones, like that guy right there, that's an oak. And then beside me, we've got some more oaks. 
and they're replacing these earlier sometimes kind of often called weedy trees right there back behind right at the tip of my finger that's a, a black birch they're also getting sick and starting to die out so this is natural this is normal forest function so i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you enjoyed going for this little walk with me and go out and practice identifying your trees have a wonderful day